In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer a lot of fitness and health questions asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Um, but what we do in the intro of the episode is we talk about current events, we talk about studies, and we have a lot of fun. So I'm going to give you the breakdown of the whole episode. Okay, Here it so, is. So we started the podcast by talking about uh, Jill Sane Maxwell. This is the woman that was with uh, Epstein. A disgusting human being. The guy that killed himself. Now she got caught, and let's hear what she says. But, or, or will she? Or will someone suicide her? We'll find out. We'll find <laughs> so, out. Stay then we, tuned. Then we talk about eBay. Uh, boy, they're under a lot of fire. Let's see what happens there. We talk about Kanye West running for president. Can it get any weirder? I don't Kanye know. 2020. Uh, and then we talk about the plague breaking out in China. That's all we need, another one of those. Yeah. Uh, Harvard. Harvard University is going to be all online next year. Oh, and the price stays the same. Then we talk about Naturally. <laughs> then we talk about COVID. Uh, cases are spiking, but less people are dying. What's going on there? Uh, we talk about protest and coronavirus. Then we talk about the fire, uh, excuse me, the 4th of July fireworks uh, going on, how they were scaring the hell out of our pets. Um, Adam put Brain FM on in the background, which helped them out. And then he added Ned to their dog food. Now, Ned is used by humans, but you can also give it to your animals. Ned is full-spectrum hemp oil extract, high in CBD. It's got a very calming effect. It's a natural enzyolytic, very safe. Of course, it's over-the-counter. If you'd like to try it out, by the, this is by far the best CBD product that we've tried. By far, it's high, high quality. You feel a difference the first time you take this, okay? Um, we have a discount for you. Go to the website, Hello Ned. that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com, um, uh, excuse me, forward slash Mind Pump after that. Use the code Mind Pump, get 15% off your first purchase. Then we talk about Unsolved Mysteries uh, on uh, Netflix. It's a great yeah. show. And finally, Branch Chain Amino Acids and why they may be making you feel depressed. No joke. Then we got into the questions. The first question, this person wants to know the difference between a good morning and a Romanian deadlift. Similar exercises, but what are the differences? The next question, this person wants to know how you put farmer walks into your workouts. Like where do you place them? And then of course, what do farmer walks do for your body? The next question, this person wants to know if we find any value in experimenting with different popular diets. And the final question, Somebody wants to know what the hardest thing is about being a dad for all of us. Also, this month, all month long, one of our most effective changing diapers, muscle building, fat burning programs, MAPS Strong, is 50% off. Now, this program emphasizes the posterior chain. So it builds the back, and it's a full body workout, but you really get great back and butt development. Um, it's a calorie burner, it's a hard workout. It builds tremendous strength and muscle. It's one of our, uh, it's like a sleeping popular exercise uh, program. We didn't realize it'd be this popular, but a lot of people love this program. It's actually one of my favorites. Um, a lot of women really love MAP Strong because of its effect on metabolism. And when you enroll in the program, you get the whole workout. You get video demos of the exercises and technique. I mean, everything's laid out for you. So here's how you get 50% off. Go to MAPS Strong. Dot com that's m a p s s t r o n g dot com and then use the code strong fifty that's s t r o n g five zero no space for the discount and it's t shirt time oh shit dog you know it's my favorite time of the week oh my goodness <laughs> redlined again all right we have two winners for Apple Podcasts and two winners for Facebook the Apple Podcast winners are Noble Knight fifteen TG Jane. For Facebook, we have Christian Tovar Vargas and Mega, Megan Laudick. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Hey, so what's the uh, what's the over-under for uh, when uh, when uh, uh, Epstein's girlfriend... Can, yeah, a suicide, uh, when they suicide I don't know. Her. Can, can you bet on that in <laughs> Vegas? That would be amazing. Hey, is, did they put, they put her in the same exact place? I so I tried. I, re to, I read that. I tried to confirm that, and I couldn't confirm. Oh, it, it might have been like yeah. fake news. Yeah. So first off, she would. Did you, did you hear where they found her? Uh -uh. No. They found her in this like house that was on 150 acres in, I believe, New Hampshire. It was totally isolated. 
she had someone buy it for her, essentially. She wasn't even on the paperwork. So she was totally, totally hidden. Hiding. And the way that they 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 got they got her is they had agents running through the forest on each side, pulling up. They had uh, uh, helicopters coming in. Wow. Yeah, just to grab her. What? Wow. Yeah, dude. Now and, and, she was in the she was in the documentary, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So I, I mean, I don't get it. Why be in the documentary if you're going to go hide then? N- no, that was I think they no, they use clips. Yeah, she wasn't actually like uh, oh. talking in, in the interview. Yeah. Oh, she, so I thought they I, I thought they interviewed her and she was in the documentary like that she wasn't no. like no. one of the people that volunteered. No, but as soon as he got caught, she disappeared. She was gone, and apparently, according to the the victims or the people who are accusing. Um, them of all these these crimes or whatever. Uh, she's just as bad as Epstein. Like she was involved in all of it, all yeah. that stuff. Well, you kind of have to be right? right if you're the assistant for that many years, and you 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 can't just. That was his right hand person. Yeah. Oh boy. And she and and she's already said apparently she's going to sing, like she's going to start talking. Nothing would make me happier. Dude. Yeah, but if she dies again in prison, like what what do we? I know that's the thing. Is like, are people going to be mad enough to like? Because this whole thing is crazy to me. Yeah. It's you know the flight logs yeah. for so for the listeners who don't know, uh, so Epstein um, apparently involved in this wide ring of uh, sex trafficking and pedophilia. Okay, it's disgusting, right? Terrible. Yeah. Human being. He had he owned an island, and they once they caught him, and everything they raided this island. This island was essentially a isolated place where he would take. Very powerful people. Wait a second. It's the island. I thought it was the big New Mexico ranch where all this stuff is going down. It's on the island? He has both. He's yeah, got the ranch. A, that was another one. That's another one. But he also has this island. Oh, I thought the I thought the big ranch in New Mexico was where all the big dirt was going on. Both. But yeah. the island is secluded. He can fly people in. Very powerful people. But you don't realize you can get there by boat. You can also get there by boat. Which is like, okay, so you have all these flight logs that are coming out with all these like big famous people that have gone through and whatnot, and Dude. it's questionable. But nobody's, I mean, you don't have the records of all those boats and, and yachts that have come through. No, have you seen that? Did you see the artwork and shit that he would have up in the in that in this island and the, in the and then people connected to him? Yeah. The uh, let me put it this way: If I was going over someone's house and I saw some of his artwork, I would immediately leave yes. and call the police. Hundred percent, because it's it's creepy shit. It's, it's like child pornography stuff. It's isn't almost. It? Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you well, can, they're like bound. They're like it's like kids like kneeling and they're bound with like straps dude, and if, whatnot. Uh, who puts that up on their wall? But this this place in 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 this island, it basically was designed specifically. You could tell for this type of stuff, and you know these victims would say is when they're there. They couldn't. They, they felt helpless because they're on an island. Yeah. yeah. So you know, shit would happen, and then and then what do they do? Then where do you go? And the flight logs are crazy, bro. The people who flew to this island repeatedly: uh, Oprah, Will Smith, mm-hmm. uh, Madonna, Eminem, mm-hmm. Eminem, Bill Clinton flew on Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Bill Clinton flew to this island on uh, Epstein's private plane sixteen times, something like that. It's like, Oprah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought Oprah is like untouchable. I know, dude. I don't know, bro. It it, it feels like this like ring of crazy. This web it's definitely of a this- center for power, right? Uh, however you want to look at it, maybe some celebrities went there just you know to check out whatever. But it's still this is like this is where everybody congregated. Yeah, or and- maybe that's part of the brilliance, right? Is to like throw normal parties that are for all the celebrities. So you've got all this traffic of basically you've got everybody potentially in on it. But they're really not. They're just throwing big part, and then he has his like dirty. I don't friends. know, dude. Because yeah, I don't know when you connect all of this with uh, what people are saying. You know, the victims are saying. Mm-hmm. Like, there's one victim that was saying that she got repeatedly raped by Prince Andrew, mm-hmm. um, and Jill St. Maxwell was the one that was orchestrating it. Um, well, lot- I've heard lots of stories like for a long time about all this, and it was always conspiracy theory. And actually, in that documentary, so I don't, I haven't told this on the podcast, but I knew uh, one of those girls went to my high school. Oh. So it was like it even made it even more real to me, like what was going on there. And it's just it's disgusting, and, and I, I don't know. This is one of those things where I'm just like now I feel like I can't. I can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, I, was, I can't help, you know, my this is where my conspiracy stuff starts going. Is I can't help think that, like, all the crazy shit that we're going through right now, 
connected. Uh, yeah, like they're like yeah. they're all afraid that they're about right, to right, right. Like it's like their last ditch like, effort to distract. Like imagine if if we didn't have what's going on right now with with all with all the riots and what's going and the on COVID in and COVID the fear. right now. Yeah, if we didn't have that all going on right now, how much attention oh, would be we'd on? We just this? all be centered on it. Every every news outlet would be talking about this twenty four seven the same way they're talking about COVID and riots. Dude, you're right? talking about some of the most powerful people. Uh, in politics, in the in, world, in in in, in uh, Hollywood, in Hollywood, in music, mm-hmm. Bill Clinton. Okay, on these flight logs, I don't. Several of these flights told the Secret Service not to come. Yep. When does anybody ever do that in that position? Yeah. So he would go by himself. That doesn't tell me that's not suspicious as fuck. Yeah, right, especially when that shit's covered. You don't want right? to watch this. So there's a couple theories. These, now, these are the conspiracy theory theories, right? One of them is that he worked for other intelligence agencies in other parts of the world. Yeah, and blackmailing all these yes, people. Yes, right? and he would film these powerful people mm-hmm. you know, doing these terrible things and use it as blackmail. Uh, one uh, and then there's another theory that says it was the Soviet Union that put this together mm. as a way to blackmail um, powerful people and to have you know a bunch of power or whatever or people who wanted the Soviet Union to come back. I don't know, but I think this whole thing is is crazy, and I think I'm I'm afraid that when it all comes apart, that people are going to be so shocked. It's definitely like the curtains being uh, pulled back. So all of a sudden now it's like, oh wow, there's real evil shit out there. Yeah, and let me. I mean, here's the thing: like it, for people who are like, oh, those people couldn't do those things. Like, remember Bill Clinton? Yep. I mean, not Bill Clinton. Excuse me, uh, Bill Cosby. Yeah, mm-hmm. Bill Cosby, like the most liked person in America. Yeah, by far. There, yeah. I, I don't think he ever, nobody ever had a negative thought about the no, guy. No, no. And he turned out to Bill be a, 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 a rapist. Yeah, you know, so who knows, dude? And remember, these are all a lot of these people are actors. Yeah, and I always uh, I remind myself this because I can even fall prey to this. Actors are professional liars; they're the best. <laughs> it's true. Mm-hmm. You, you, when you watch a movie and you see an actor playing someone, and you're like, "Wow, they deserve an award for that." Well, that's that's incredible lying. So <laughs> they're very, they're very like good. insulting all actors right now. Well, I, well, I mean, they're doing it for you know art or whatever. But I mean, well, they become somebody else. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing. Don't think that they're not masterfully skilled at making you making themselves likable. You yeah. know what I mean? That's yeah. exactly what they do. So I'm I'm like I'm watching this thing. Like, what is going, dude? You want to happen? Speaking of crazy, yeah. did you see uh, the message that Justin sent over about eBay? Oh, oh so t- so yeah, talk, talk about that a little bit, dude. This is this is crazy. Justin sent that over, and I it, you know it was in our main thread, and I saw. I think it was like a. I don't know, a 10 minute press conference or whatever. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'll get around yeah, it. Was a, yeah, I know. It was a longer video. Oh, but worth watching because it is fucking crazy. Dude. eBay literally, okay, like super like covert like scheme to go harass somebody. So this couple had a, a blog and they were basically bashing eBay, mm-hmm. just their service and this and that. And they, they had got enough traction that it was actually hurting sales or yeah, whatever. Yeah, hurting, hurting eBay. And and eBay is caught on record like the uh, was it the CEO was it the CEO I want uh, yeah it was executives, executives but it was I don't t- know if it was CEO yeah I can't remember if it was the CEO or just some of the executives saying that take them down do yes. whatever it takes yes. and the shit that they Get were, that bitch bro they were they were sending her like uh, uh, larva and a bloody pig head of yeah uh, yeah a pig head just like, delivering face. it to the door oh they fake account they set fake accounts up on on twitter and, yes. and instagram and were messaging them like just making death threats everything you could think of they were and they had they were, it. They, they were getting like swingers like to to they would like post a party so yes. you could come <laughs> you could come at any time just yeah. knock you know you don't have to call ahead or anything like yeah, Bro, up through the night it was so sinister that they had like phases of this like first it's like scare harass do everything and then eBay was to look like they were trying to help so they even had a, like a plan of action of like Reaching yeah, out, help the authorities. Like, yes, like find you know. Wow, that's yeah. So they ta- they tampered with uh, evidence. Uh, it's a this it's, is gonna it's gonna be a huge black eye on eBay. Oh wow, that's huge. That's, what terrible people. Yes, oh. that's that the whole swinger thing sounds like an amazing prank. I know. That's what I thought. Friend. I was actually laughing about that one. I was like, oh wow, that's pretty. good. I might do that to one of you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like they're, they gave, hey, like, we're here for the gangbang. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
yeah. it gave like instructions to just knock on the door, come on in, we'll say <laughs> at any hour. Yeah. 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 yeah, just to see who'd show up. Dude, how, you know? how, they how, sent they sent uh, porn to the neighbors, but with their names on oh, it. Right. So intentionally yes. sent it over to there. Like, oh my god! Oh, dude. they just they went dude. all out. Bro. That's dirty. Uh, you know, and it reminds me. I don't know if you guys remember the story with Patton Oswald, where he was like making fun of KFC and like their bowl, where you're eating out of a bowl, almost like you're a pig eating slop. Uh -huh. You know, and like uh, his whole his whole bit. He had a couple bits about KFC, but they got really angry and were like totally harassing him and doing like creepy, weird shit like that, uh, you know, to, to him. So it's like these corporations, uh, it, it, it's crazy. Like I've heard like stories of that where they pay people to like go, you know, take these people out there to talk. Well, shit. at the end of the day, you, com you know, companies and corporations and politicians, it's all people. Yeah. And do you have bad people? Yeah, and they're emotional and they're yeah, doing you stupid You got bad people everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's bound at some point. There's some bad people going to get some powerful positions and right. start doing some crazy but shit. But it's crazy. They have all that on record. Oh, they eBay. have. Everything. Yeah, they, they were quoting and the email. They had, it wasn't like, this isn't speculation. This is like FBI's involved. Yep. They, the cases. How come this isn't like huge news everywhere? Because oh, look at everything that's going oh, on. Oh, yeah, I guess yeah, you're exactly. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's why, I, exactly. If, if Epstein, stuff like this, I feel like would be everywhere if it wasn't for all the COVID and ride stuff going on. I mean, it's that's insane to me. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe I haven't seen it anywhere else. But so what I, I, wonder, I know I just stumbled across it. I don't even remember what I saw. And it. as of the recording, I'm looking at the the shares of eBay, and they don't seem to be taking a hit. I, I can only imagine. I guess if this takes, if they really gain steam, maybe it hasn't this. spread enough. Yeah. yeah the, well, that the, was it. Was you sent over that that press conference? That was July 4th. Okay. So that just just happened. happened yeah, yeah. This isn't like this is like breaking news type of stuff that that came out. I hadn't heard anything. I hadn't read any articles on it, but that's Dude. it's. They have everything. It's I, not like a maybe. This is going to happen. No, no, no. We're speculating. There's, the evidence is there. It's, well, yeah. it's so as if you know the news can't get any crazier. We have a new potential new candidate running for president. <laughs> I saw this. <laughs> is this real? Yeah, is he Con announced. Is Kanye it. West really well, running for president? So that's technically, so he made an announcement that he was going to be running for president. Um, Elon supported him. Did you see that? Elon retweeted underneath. I got, I got you, man. <laughs> I, can I just tell you how much I love Elon? Yeah. I love Elon. If I, I swear we become best friends. We hung out with him anyway. Uh, Kanye, apparently it's real that he's running for president, but he, I don't know if you'll be able to get on all fifty states' ballots. It might be too late for that. Mm. So what, how does that work? Explain that to me. So you how can much run. How money do you need to actually pull it off? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm a sure lot, he, dude. He has plenty. Well, that's what I mean. I'm just like I'm. I'm trying to understand if he's going to pay f like front all that like himself. I'm sure. I'm Trump sure did, he, didn't he? Yeah, he did. That's yeah. crazy. So he's got a lot of money. So, so let's talk about that for a second. So first off, if you want to effectively run, you want to be on all 50 states' ballots, right? You don't want people to have a ballot. Now they could write you in. <laughs> but who? How many people do that? Right? They do so, like Mickey Mouse and all that. That's yeah. So thing. so that's going to be tough. But let's just say that you know that all whatever that all works out. What do you think the strategy is? Do you think he literally well, wants to be the president? No, I think I think uh, I think and I think I heard you say this, and I agree. Is that I think that he is. I mean, he's already came out right. He's an, he's a big you know make America great supporter, Trump supporter. Oh yeah, he's a MAGA for sure. So you know the idea would probably be to split the votes. Right yeah. to split the Biden votes. Oh, because well, because yeah, what do they want so much? They want the young vote, right? And so everybody knows Kanye. He's you he, know from our generation. Kanye would he, and lower. He definitely would pose a threat for both the young and the black vote. Uh -huh. And if the Democrat Party loses even a few percent of that, which is typically Democratic, they're right? de they're dead. Yeah, they can't lose that at all. Yeah. They get something like ninety something percent of the black vote. If they if that just dropped a few percent, they're done. Um, same thing with the young vote. Okay, so now, it's like almost like he's running on purpose to do that, and then help now if Trump you're win. the head of the DNC or whatever, like what would your wild card be to kind of counter that? Oh well, I already told I I already said what I thought their only strategy would, to, would be would be to, to run Michelle Obama. Michelle as his running mate. Yeah, that would be a tough ticket, but I don't see anything else that could. Is that where is that? Because that was a rumor that we heard a while I ago. I don't think it's happening. Shh, it's so far the people in the running are not her for for VP or whatever. But this Kanye thing is pretty interesting, man. Yeah, he would. That would totally happen if he ran. Bro, we he I would feel not like we hurt. Live in cartoon world, dude. It's, <laughs> first we have a TV fucking star become president. It, it never stopped being the reality <laughs> show from The Apprentice to then into the Office. You I, know, it just I kept feel going. Even stronger about my prediction of The Rock being a president within fucking two decades. Dude. <laughs> you think so? Hundred percent, dude. The Rock is going to be a president. Dude. It's such a shit show. That's where that this that is, might make. That's sense. where this is going. Because so much of this is is now so much of politics is social media. It wasn't that that didn't yeah. wasn't it. 
Like nobody, and that was, I mean, you you know that's why Trump won, yeah. because he mastered that first. Yeah. They start, Obama started it, right? He was the first to really start to utilize it, but Trump took it to a whole nother level, and that's what I, I think we're going to see now. I, well, I really I think thinking it's going to be celebrities, this. dude. Yeah, I was thinking about this a lot, and I do, I do think it is definitely the birth of completely new change of, like, the way everything is going to be done, like, on all accounts. I, I think that, like... It's interesting to see all these people getting rooted out, you know, that have been doing shady shit and all, like as much like craziness. Like I try to find like pockets of, of hope and happiness and like what's going to be in the future. Like, you know, maybe like us rooting all this out and, and realizing that it was such a shit show. Like, how are we going to piece it all together is going to define everything? I, I tell you what the answer is. The answer is just reduce dramatically reduce the power that these that they have. Then it doesn't matter as much. Right. When they have a ton of power, you know, Kanye being the president, scary. Yeah. He doesn't have that much power. I'm like, whatever. Put whoever you know. Let's. I don't. I don't care if he runs. Uh, if he's the president, because they can't do a whole lot. I, you know, I still go back to. We have to. We're gonna. I think voting is gonna evolve somehow. Somehow we're gonna have to change the way it is to to to, to make it too. We make it too easy. I think. And this is coming from someone who probably would fail the test. Right. I think that you should have to take a test. You should have to take like a <laughs> no, you sh yes. That would never yeah, work out. I, why? You should have to take a test before you vote on the person who's running our Who country. Who gets to design the test? I don't know. I mean, I don't care. <laughs> All let left and right put it together, but it, it should be like so you should have like at least a basic understanding of politics, our country, Economics. law, economic. Yeah, you should have that. And if you don't. Then you don't get to vote. Yeah. And if you really, really want to put your vote in, do you have to do some studying and research? Yeah, that would never, that would never fly. Why? They just wouldn't fly. Because, I mean, I, 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 why not? Because because both sides would say you're, you're right limiting now, this many people. Right now, it's people. just a popularity contest. It, it always is. And and because it's a popularity contest, you have a bunch of people running out there. You're going to get free lunches. You're going to get uh, what, yeah. whatever we we want to give to you. Yeah, and that's and, always and been, then all the corporate, you know, you know, like infiltration and kickbacks and all that, like that motivates like actual candidates to even. Uh, run it's like you know we got to eliminate all that well stuff. again if okay you can't if you want to eliminate that much money that goes into it you have to eliminate their power because if Definitely. they have that much power to change to affect corporations bottom line mm. then that is a very very strong incentive to spend a lot of money to get what you want wow. if that didn't exist there would there would be no money that yeah. would go into it and so I, i'm you know i think at some hopefully at some point i doubt this will happen but i would love at some point for everybody to be like Hey, we all don't like these people. Why don't we just make them like not that powerful? That way they can't do shit too much. You know what I mean? Let's just take care of ourselves a little bit and, and see and what happens. And bring that third party up a little higher. Uh, well, that was, yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good Come luck. On. Hey, you guys want to hear some more crazy news? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, the, there's a, the, the bubonic plague apparently has busted out in China huh? in an area. Oh, yeah, there was Lord. a, there's a, they said that in, I'm going to read this to you. A suspected case of bubonic plague uh, was found in China's Inner Mongolia. Okay, um, is this <laughs> is this again from fleas from rats? Oh, like, I don't like it used to be because. Okay, I, I I told you about this. I forget what the name of the operation was, but this was like a strategy. Uh, I believe like it was it was after everything kind of went down, and then um, like there was going to be a, a planned attack on the on the on the Pacific coast on on the west coast uh, to basically uh, like do like like add like a bubonic plague, you know, by by uh, launching. Uh, I think it was it was fleas or it was something that carried it uh, from this from submarines. They were going to launch it and, and and throw these like like disease bombs onto the west Wait, coast. Wait, which strategy was this? This was from Japan, I believe. Was it really? Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I love Justin. Knows so many of these things. It's totally <laughs> random, but that just reminded me, dude. Justin and I the other night we were all hanging out. We were staying up late and we were just trading. Theories, you know, all these crazy, <laughs> or all these stories and stuff. You know where my brain's at. Oh, dude. I love it. I totally yeah. love it. Yeah, no, so the plague. Yeah, so they had a little so breakout. The plague's plague. happening again. And right. they identified a new pig flu in China that oh could potentially has potential pandemic um, properties. What? So, yeah. <laughs> like, no. Like out of space. We don't need another. Pandemic, I know. In the making, I'm I telling know. you, dude. I'm gonna invest in one of those fucking, what are those little underground bunkers? Bunkers, dude, and just <laughs> bunker up for the next decade. Just, yeah. till all this just shit. go and live in there. Yeah. Start a society, yeah. underground people. Yeah. Shiro Ishi. 
uh, that was the the um, the general that had that idea that was going to drop these like disease bombs with lice. Did you did you hear did you and this was this was during World War II I'm assuming or right, yes. right around the time. Did mm-hmm. you hear about the strategy that we had to to light their cities on fire where we would attach these incendiary bombs on bats and then l- let the bats out over these Japanese cities and because bats seek underhangs, you know like what overhangs or whatever at houses what? That the bats would go underneath the these overhangs of their Japanese houses, and then the bombs would go off, set everything on fire. Wow. Do you hear about this? This what? is an actual strategy. Dude. What? Yeah, this is an actual. Like, do they just get really high in a room? And I just, mean, it's like, kind of creative it? though when you think about I it. Know. It's because there's a little bit of brilliance there, you know. <laughs> I know. Crazy, I know. but brilliant it's, at the same it's, time. It's so funny. Yeah. So Harvard uh, just came out and said that um, the whole twenty to 20, uh, 2021 year. It's all uh, at home. Nobody go to school. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then the second piece of news with Harvard is that the tuition will remain $50,000 a year. It's not going to change. <laughs> so everybody is going to be at remote and- Paying full you're price. You're paying a full price. Wow. Just yeah. for the name Harvard. Yes. Wow. So you know, how long do you think it'll last until people are like, eh, I'm not going to pay that yeah. much for this? Forget you, Yeah. Pal. I feel like it, they'll, it might be okay this coming year, but I feel like if it keeps happening- People are going to say, why am I paying 50 Gs that's, for an online education that I could get for five? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I feel like this uh, this pressure is going to uh, – because uh, higher education's already been kind of under fire for a little while because the cost has exploded past inflation. Right. I feel like this kind of stuff, this may be the last straw that breaks the camel's back. I'm really interested what school's going to – my uh, my best friend was over. I got it seen might it. actually be what you know. Yeah, that counts. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> my, I actually have to learn. My uh, my best friend's a principal, and so I I haven't had a chance to catch up with him until recently for Max's birthday. He came by, and I and I asked him. I said, "What are what are you guys doing with schools?" He goes, "Honestly, bro, he's like, we don't even fucking know." Yeah, he's like, "It's it changes every." He goes, "The district right next to me." He goes, "They're." Uh, what they're doing, and he goes, "I think this is the smartest move." So they're so some of these schools are are thinking about doing this, where you do. Um, Fifty percent of the kids go to school uh, Tuesday, Thursday, mm-hmm. and then the other fifty percent go Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday is at home. Mm-hmm. So he goes, I think that's the best strategy. That's what my son's school is doing. Yeah. Is that what they're doing? Yep. Mm-hmm. Is they're, yours too? Yeah, uh-huh, oh, okay. So he goes it's like he, a hybrid model. Yeah, he says he thinks that's probably the the best strategy that he's seen so far. Now he says his district, he says, are claiming they're going all back. He goes, I don't think it's going to happen though. They're saying that he goes, but I, I think that when it come when it comes time to start again, they're not going to do. Well, it. so I've been reading about mm-hmm. the uh, what, so right, something strange is happening right now. You have a explosion of COVID cases, but you the death rate continues to like the, not that just the death rate, but the total deaths continues to drop. What well, mm-hmm. and and they said, well, the deaths need time to catch up, but uh, it's now been like five weeks since things have been reopening and the cases have been spiking. And we still see the case, the deaths drop. What's the average like uh, time length somebody has it and, and you know like has COVID? I th- uh, oh, you mean until if they're gonna die, they're gonna die? Well, yeah. Well, I mean like until they get over it. Like, oh, know. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's like a month. A month? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's that, yeah, don't quote me on that. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Mm. But the, the the amount of people are di- that are dying daily keeps going down, but cases keep going up. So I read this really good article on that on on why that could be happening. And one is we're testing way more people that makes sense right so now you're testing a lot more people who might have mild symptoms Mm -hmm. and the other thing is that the average age of the person being infected right now is much younger than it was yeah so we're not getting all these nursing home people that are getting COVID. now we're seeing a lot more people in the 30s and 40s and of course they they don't they don't die at nearly the same rate i heard there's a bunch of shit going on right now in hospitals too because um they get more money if you have COVID patients yeah. in your hospital. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So there's lots of shit going on right now where they're listing patients as COVID when they're- Which naturally, you know, if you are if you get incentivized- Right, money. Yeah. Like, mm. it, there's going to be, like, shenanigans out there. Yeah. Right? That's just part of the whole thing. Yeah, but it, but yeah, but this, this article was really, it was written very, very intelligently. And it's true. The average age of the person right now that's testing positive is, is going down. So of, you're, of course you're going to see- 
less deaths. Even if the cases rise, right. you know, the death rate among, I think, over 60 is way different than it is if you're under 40. Well, and I think we, we always speculated yeah. this, right, that, that there's potentially tons of people that have had it and that were just asymptomatic or didn't even have any symptoms at all, right? So I think that they, I think there's a good chance that we're going to continue to see that go down. What is the percentage well, at right now? What is the death, you know what the death rate is at? Uh, I, th I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know it's comparable to a, right now I think it's comparable to a bad flu. Yeah. Do you think we'll ever look at it like flu? Or I mean, it's obviously it's going to be determined once we finally get the vaccine and all that. I think that people might be a, bi a bit more at ease, like, oh yeah, it's it's COVID season, you know, mm. instead of it being always a fucking pandemic. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe depending on because it's still kind of new. So yeah. I think looking back, you know, two years from now we might be able to be like, you know, it, it was worse than we thought or not nearly as bad. Yeah, you know, as we thought. So. Uh, so well, I think it's already I think we can already safely say that it's it's worse because just because of what it's doing to the hospitals. Right. I mean, just the, the regardless of the, the death percentage of it and that we may all get it one day and it may be like a flu. The flu has never done not not in like in the recent decades. Right. We haven't had a flu overwhelm hospitals like we are. And I think that's the big argument right now is that regardless of the death rate. We are people get, just get really sick. Yeah, people get really sick, and we have you know we the hospitals can't handle mm -hmm. that many people coming through, and that's the big that's one of the biggest fears. So regardless of what side you're on of how scary it is or isn't, I know that's very it's become very political right. on you know who you are you a non mask wearer or mask wearer bullshit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, nobody can debate or argue that some of these hospitals like my 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 uh, best my other best friend his wife is a, a respiratory therapist so she's right in the thick of it yeah and they just had i mean their whole hospital has now been converted to a covid hospital mm. she is like but then there's, there's, there's a few right like yeah. like that like hot spots but there's yeah. all there's uh, I'm, there's a lot like a courtney's hospital that has nobody right. and, they're, and they're laying nobody's people off in. yeah exactly and, and they're going out of business because nobody's going in yeah because they shut down all the other stuff that they do because they've been mandated or whatever yeah it's tricky because yeah. but like you said though there are there are hot spots where it is it's overwhelmed because it's all centralized in that one yeah, i think location. that's why i think that's why it's causing so much division mm -hmm. right because yeah. if you're somebody who's coming like if you're because you don't see it like, right if you're like Courtney's friends from her hospital and they're like, we're getting laid off because there's no work here and there's no COVID patients in here. And then you have the other, like literally two hours away up the road. Yeah. You have my, my best friend's hospital and it's all, it's a COVID hospital and they're in the thick of it. And so her perspective, it's totally different. So you get these two, huh. these well, I mean, differing it, opinions. The, th the part about it all that really makes me upset is the way that it's been handled by uh, our, you know, quote unquote, our leaders or politicians. Oh, yeah. Um, they, they're, the it's, worst. It's really bad because it's inconsistent. This is what makes it bad. If you're consistent, um, then, then if you're inconsistent, people start to lose their faith in what you say. And so, you know, they're saying, for example... Study comes out that shows that, you know, remember, 22 million people. Yeah, can we just go by the data? Yeah, 22 million people protested, uh, you know, over the recently, right? Over the, the course of, you know, after George Floyd and whatever. So it's tons and tons of people protesting in some cities, tens of thousands of people together walking through the streets, you know, protesting, yelling, screaming, whatever. And they're saying that that caused, that that's not responsible for the spike in, in COVID cases. Oh, that didn't have anything to do with it. Church singing is. Yeah, right. And then they'll say stuff like that. Or <laughs> it's complete horseshit. Or yeah, or you know, they'll say that's fine. It's totally safe, but your but gyms still have to stay closed. Businesses still have to stay closed. Yeah. And and then the argument is, well, one is essential, one is it? There's it's all essential. I, I think protesting is a right yeah. that we have and we should never infringe on that. Ever. I will fight to the death hundred percent to defend that. But people's businesses but you also. I mean, come on. Like let's let's. I mean, we live in reality. Like you, that's a group of people. Right. Like in just a different place. Right. And so, like in California, they're they're saying still they're, they they just made it illegal to sing in churches. But if you want to go protest in tens of thousands of people, they have no problem. Now that I'm actually not, that actually passed. I believe so. I was kidding. I, that was that's for real. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That's a real I, thing. That was like just one of those things where they're saying that they don't. No, like no. church is fine, but you can't sing. Whoa. Yeah, I know. Whoa. That's, that's bullshit. And, and, to, and to me, it's like, I, not that I'm saying we should ban protest. That's not my argument. My argument is you, you be consistent and, you know, you're either a free country or not. Tell people the risks. Right. And then allow them to make the choice to risk themselves. That includes yourself, meaning if you're afraid of going places because you're whatever, then, then don't. That's your choice. And I totally support that. If you want to take risks, go for it. If you're a business and you say, hey, but you can't walk in the doors unless you're wearing 
a mask and I take your temperature, that's also within your rights. It's your business. Right. Because I see people like, this is a free country. You know, I shouldn't have to wear a mask. You're going into a private business. Doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, that, yeah. You know, yeah, they're not coming on your property. Yeah. If they come you. in your house to tell you to wear a mask, that's when I'll be have a problem with it. But yeah. you're going to someone else's business. That, right. That's totally in line with right. a free society. But yeah, they're trying to say that the that the the reason why there were spikes was because families got together. It wasn't because of protests. Now, finally, if, to me, as an average person, especially if I owned a business that got totally just now, if I owned a gym, I used to own a gym. Okay. If I owned a gym today, it would have it would been I would be so out of business. I'd be totally screwed. Mm -hmm. I would be completely screwed with with all of this. I would have lasted a few months, but not this long. No. Yeah. And I would be so angry by with with people shutting my business down forcibly. Some of these business owners were were, were taken, uh, fined, maybe even thrown in jail. Uh, and yet you're you're okay with all this other stuff that's going on. I'd be like, look, be consistent, man, because my business is is essential mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's the problem that you know that I have uh, with all this stuff. Hey, were you guys able to total change the subject here? I'm sure Doug will appreciate that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, gets, he starts sweating. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Like, it's hot in here. Okay, it's already been long enough talking about this shit. Move along. Uh, no, for the fourth now up where you you guys were. I left. I left you guys up at Truckee to come down to Max's birthday. Did you, did they have? And no one does fireworks up there, right? You guys Told, no, no fireworks. I at heard all. some like at night. Like there's a few bangs, but it wasn't like, yeah, they didn't have anywhere. There's no organized, you know, uh, fireworks. I, I believe they canceled it this year, yeah. right? Because everywhere normally it's at, at over Lake Tahoe. They normally do totally it, canceled and they canceled it. it. Yeah, and, and it was canceled in a lot of places. Did you guys see the the video of uh, L. A. No. Okay, so. All you know, no fireworks displays at all. Not even the ones that normally they would do uh, for the fourth, because they don't want people to come together again because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So somebody filmed like a like a broad film over the city, mm -hmm. and you just see illegal fireworks, bro, <laughs> everywhere, dude. Wow, oh, it was like a war zone. I heard that them. at the beach, like at Santa Cruz. I heard that there was a lot of that along the beach, anyways. Yeah. Like they couldn't control it. Oh, it was crazy in our neighborhood. Oh, it was, really? so here's my luck, dude. Okay. We've we have had uh, you know we live in the bay so we have great weather like ninety nine point seven percent of the year literally yeah. I think there's I believe there's two weeks of the year that's like hot, really hot right. yeah and, that's and, it right and we just we're having it right now Fourth of July kind of weekend tends to be you know and the second week of July we start hitting the high nineties may even get close to a hundred and my AC breaks didn't so, this happen last year yeah it, it, yes. <laughs> It did not at the same exact time, but around the same time, I had this. Remember, and I was staying at the uh, hotel and stuff like yeah. that up in the beach, right? So here it happens again to me. And, and we you, and, and for the for people that don't know, yeah, Adam, yeah. if he, he Adam turns into grumpy bear, this is his kryptonite. It's yeah. hot. Oh, it is. He be, he hates it. Yeah, I <laughs> I I get very very irritable. I can't sleep at night. I'm just and and so I'm like, what are the chances that this has? So think about this too. Okay, so. It's super hot. It's, that's hard. It's okay. It annoys me. Whatever. I can, I can figure something out. But it's also 4th of July weekend. Now, what I have to do, so in every other 4th of July, because my dogs go crazy oh, yeah. when they hear fireworks. They will not stop barking. Mm. But when I seal up my house, I turn on uh, the AC and running it. And I actually, this is a trip. I run Brain FM, and it cancels. So I run Brain FM between where all the windows are and the dogs, mm. and they can't hear it. Hmm. But when the windows are open, oh, now the booms come in. Oh, now it comes in. So my house this whole weekend, I've had, I've got Brain FM and two different speakers upstairs, downstairs, like blasting full blare. TV is all, <laughs> all the way up. Wow. I went over and doused my dog. Both meals, I fed the dogs doused in Ned, like cover them with this like the whole bottle. Oh, just bro, I had to all, just, I had just CBD all the, the stuff, fuck out of them. all the stops, <laughs> yeah. all the stops to get them to calm down. And I actually, so I had forgot about uh, using the net at first, and we were at at uh, Katrina's family's house for Fourth of July and Max's birthday, and it was like six o'clock, and I was so uh, consumed with his birthday that I actually wasn't even thinking about Fourth of July, and then my dad comes out and goes, "Oh, I brought some fireworks." I was like, "Oh shit!" It's f I, so I had to drive back home to go do all this stuff because I had left them in the house like that, not not thinking about it. Now, how effective is it for them when you give them Ned? It is. It's really effective. So what do you what do you notice in them? They're just way they calm down. Mm. Yeah, it's not enough to it's not a sedative enough like giving them like a you know a like a you know Norco type because they make like dogs you know Norco yeah, like or, a benzo or yeah whatever. exactly benzo so they make they make that for dogs 
And that's uh, like a really heavy sedative, but I, I'm always like cautious about giving them shit like that. Well, it's interesting because I I've been to the pet store and I've seen a lot of brands popping up with pet food with CBD Tons infused. Now. But it's like, okay, what's the quality of the CBD? You know that they're actually putting in it. You know, so uh, it makes it does make a ton more sense to actually give them the concentrated source. That's how I their, feel f- in their food because I'm like, okay, uh, this CBD. We've talked about this already, right? CBD has gone bananas it's in everything hair hair products now mm-hmm. shampoo soaps like everything i mean everybody and their mother are just throwing soap the cbd in it because everyone's all the benefits are coming out and yeah but are they really putting cbd w- well right and what is the dose uh, efficacious well and when you know the like good good full spectrum um hemp oil like that isn't cheap if it's really really good if it's quality sourced it's been tested it's been te- third party I tested did. i tell you what yeah. if you use cbd t- 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 Try full spectrum hemp oil extract, like a good quality one. Yeah, I, you, it's a huge difference. Yeah, there's no comparison whatsoever. You have other cannabinoids in there. You have the terpenes in there, um, and it's it's third party tested, so it has what it says it has. You feel it. It's not like you know your normal CBD. Well, yeah, you feel a little bit. This you actually feel. Well, uh, and a again, big I, I I've, my dogs are eight and six, right? So I've had them for a long time, well before we were sponsored by Ned, and I had never had even thought about this. And because I, I've taken them everywhere, had 4th of July, of course, multiple times, I know how crazy they can get. And so to see the difference in their behavior is enough for me. Like, I see that how much more calm they are. It, it doesn't, again, it doesn't sedate them and put them out, and they still will bark. But they, they'll get so much anxiety from the fireworks that they're, like, panting, like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, like all freaked out and anxious the entire time where mm. it eliminates that. I yeah, still get I, a bark if they hear something, yeah. but it eliminates the anxiety that they my have. My dog, yeah, my, my other dog I used to have, like, he used to get real freaked out about that and would like have accidents, you know, because he'd just be shaking yeah. because of the noise and would pee. And the one time in the middle of the night, it was like all this thunder and lightning and everything jumped on bed and was like, <sighs> like on top of me and started peeing on me. <laughs> It was the dude. It was the worst to wake up to a dog. Are you just serious? Taking a leak right on top of you. <laughs> wow. I totally just remember. Have that you right never now. shared that? I don't know. Like- <laughs> it's like it, these things just come, you know, come back when you know certain things get talked about. But yeah, I remember that the distinctive. One. Arlo was, was it Arlo? Who was no, it? Oh, it was Remy. Oh, Remy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. My dog before Arlo. Oh yeah. my god, that's wow, a- <laughs> dude. I, you want to talk about anxiety? So when you left, Adam, we were, you know, uh, Adam. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Justin, Doug, and I were still uh, up at Truckee and. We were using the barbecue like crazy, you know, grilling up food. So one night, <laughs> one night, Doug, uh, he had mir- – by the way, Doug's uh, short rib recipe. Have you tried his short oh, rib? Oh, no. Delicious. I was so you bummed missed that out. I, I okay. missed Doug's. Doug's like the best cook out of all of us, and yeah. uh, you guys planned his day. Next time, Doug cooks first. Dude, his – Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, okay, my my kid, my son, ate probably three pounds worth of short ribs. He, yeah. it, I mean, all of us. So good. But anyway, he's, he marinates them, so we put them all on the grill. And, of course, the marinade's got some – Probably some olive oil or some oil in it or something like that, and the, you know the, the short ribs are, are pretty fatty. Yeah. So, so we did just that dripping and dripping, dripping on the bottom of the pan of the barbecue, right? Mm-hmm. And then we've already been barbecuing on that thing. Yeah. All, you know, week. all week, all yeah. week. Yeah. The next day uh, is or two days later, whatever. It's the fourth, and we're like, let's do a bunch of burgers. Let's just you know it's Fourth of July, burgers and hot dogs. Let's have a good time. Yeah. So we buy you know eighty percent ground beef, nice and fatty. You know, uh, you know ground you know, patties or whatever. <laughs> Put them on the grill, close the thing, and Justin and I start playing cornhole. And I'm watching the bar. Thank God I was outside. Yeah. Watching the barbecue, and I'm seeing like some thick smoke. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on over there? Yeah. Open the thing, dude, and it's a fu- it's a fire. Full on grease fire. It's a fire, dude. And you shut the propane off. And so still I go. so first thing I do is I pull it away from the house because <laughs> good, that would suck. Good awareness. Yeah. Pull it away from the house, and then I turn off the propane. And I've had this happen before, where you turn off the propane, let it burn out for a second, yeah. and it's okay. Nah, man, it kept getting bigger. We were, we were close to needing the the fire extinguisher. Yeah, so I'm I like, mean, oh. I grabbed the salt, and we're like throwing salt on it, <laughs> yeah, dude. trying to get that thing yeah, down. Bro. I go for Holy two days. Shit. You guys almost burned the house down. Yeah, Jesus well, Christ. Yeah, yeah so it, I know. Right? I had to take. I, I'm taking the burgers off because they keep dripping fat. He had like 20 it. burgers on there. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. sitting like my hand. Hey, of has course, no it's Sal's. It's Sal's cooking. Day right, that's what I know, man. <laughs> dude. So it's, it's one way to get out of your 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 night, right? Yeah. I yeah. don't know, guys. Last time I almost burned a 
house you guys down. remember yeah when you put me in charge of this remember when i burned everything down yeah. anyway yeah we dumped salt all over it and i had to clean i, I scrubbed it all down yeah. so, so now we're you cleaned up your mess yeah you now good. we're safe hey you guys got so one of the nights i was playing cards with the night i was playing cards with katrina i think we talked about this the, oh, is that when you she guys, crushed you? Yeah, yeah. Yes, bring it up again. <laughs> she totally beat you. <laughs> she barely beat me. Yeah. Good job, well, Katrina. You guys were watching <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries, yeah. and, and and I didn't feel like you really sold it, like it was that great. And then I was like, ah, the other night I didn't have anything to watch. So I'm like, oh, let's, let's just try it and see it. Oh, my God. I got oh, sucked in. Oh, it's amazing. That's yeah, good. Oh, no, you know why really we're, good. You know why we were a little disappointed? Because the the didn't original the narrator, yeah, the original unsolved mysteries had that dude that would yeah, narrate, right, right, and he wasn't in this one. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's not in them or whatever. That was just for nostalgia, because like we yeah. loved the show growing up, and it had all those like crazy stories back then, even. And, yeah, and to see them continue it, uh, it's great. I'm a so, huge fan. Now, now remind me, because I remember, because uh, I watched it a lot when I was a kid, the old ones. Didn't they actually, they would share when some of the stories get broke, right? Because yes, one yeah. of the coolest parts about this show is that a lot of these unsolved mysteries get, get solved. solved uh -huh. Because yeah. Cause all the eyes watching. Right. They all... Now, yeah, now, what, connect it. which ones are your favorite? Do you like the like the murder ones, the disappearing ones, or do you like the weird ones, I, like the alien and the? Yeah, you know, that's me. No, yeah, I'm the opposite. Too. I like I like the ones that are like supernatural. Yes, dude. Yeah. You know, and then like everybody starts to have their own accounts, and uh, Bro, but it but it is like it, again, it's that, out there. That show used to. I was a young kid when it came out. It used to terrify the hell out of me. I'd watch it and right before bed because I love that feeling. But then I wouldn't sleep, and I still did it anyway. So what I think what happens is that music, the intro music, yeah. has now been hardwired into my brain for fear. Yeah. Just the song. So when we watched it and yeah. we were sitting in front of the like, TV, ooh, ooh. I'm a 41 year old man, right? I get sitting, goosebumps. Just the music went on. I got this this wave of like goosebumps and fear. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> like, this has been hardwired totally. into me. But yeah, we watched the alien, the UFO one first. I haven't even watched that one. See, I like the I like the murder and missing. Yeah, the brain. very first episode is pretty powerful. Yeah, I, I, that'll that'll suck you in. Pretty, no, I did. Pretty crazy, dude. I got a DM from uh, from somebody. I want to bring this up on the show. That they've been using a lot of branched amino acids and that they've been feeling kind of down and they wanted to know if it was the branched amino acids oh. that was doing that. Uh, it could be. It very well could be. You shared this before. I have and I want to share it again. If you're eating a lot of protein, first of all, supplementing with branched amino acids is a waste of time because you're getting plenty in your protein. But if you're eating a lot of protein and you're taking a lot of branched amino acids, the BCAAs could be competing with the production of, of certain amino acids that will, that will make serotonin. So in animal studies, when they give them high doses of BCAAs, they notice depression-like symptoms. And because serotonin plays a role in, uh, in regulating appetite, these, ap these animals will actually eat more food to try to... Interesting. Yes. So supplementing with BCAAs, unless your protein intake is low, probably it's not only a waste of money, but if you take a lot of them, might not be good for you. Mm. First question is from Rosie Faith. Can you explain the difference between a good morning and a Romanian deadlift? I understand the weights are in different positions, but you're basically working the same muscles, right? Are they interchangeable? You know, when, when I was younger, I would look at certain exercises, and I'm talking like, you know, early 20s. I'd already been working out for a while. I'd been a trainer. I'd look at certain exercises that were different but looked so similar that I used to think to myself, they are interchangeable, you know, like incline dumbbell press, incline barbell press, same movement, same major muscle groups. Why would I waste time doing this other exercise? These aren't these aren't as close as you think. And they they're are. not even as close. Yeah. As, as I say, these aren't as close as you think they are. I mean, first of all, you're when it's loaded on your back for a good morning where the, the bar path is completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the bar path on a Romanian deadlift is similar to any other deadlift where it's close to your shins and close to your body where this is extended on a lever so you're that's di that's different you can load the back a lot like you can you're almost both hinging but that's that's about as close as you get right right so there's so obviously there's a lot of muscles that are involved but they're definitely different they uh, are and and they're even if even exercises like i did just mentioned uh, incline barbell press and incline dumbbell press the slight differences actually make a decent uh difference in in your muscle development and strength and all that stuff because your body has to fire differently it has to stabilize differently even when the exercise i mean i could go from a, a a closer grip incline to a wider grip and literally the difference could be four inches three inches mm -hmm. and it's going to be a very it's going to be a different feeling exercise i'll give you an example and people will get this because you only really understand this when you've been working out a long time so i'll use 
something else uh, uh, as an example. So we all walk all the time, right? So you're used to walking. You know what that feels like? Uh, put on high heels. You're still walking, especially if you're a man. You've never done this before. <laughs> You, if you walk in heels, seen those videos. Yeah. Those are fun. Now, now it's, you're still walking. Interesting that he picks this analogy. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's I was, like, I was, trust me, the first time I did this, I mean, God, gosh, really, have you ever done this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's totally. No. If you throw a dress on, that's why with my calves are tight. Yeah. But if, but put them on. You know, if you wear a shoe with a high heel on it uh, and walk, you'll notice same walking. You're still taking strides. Whatever. Slight difference. You're talking about inches. And it's going to be totally different in the way it feels on your body. Mm -hmm. Romanian deadlifts and good mornings, yes, they're hip hinging. Yes, the prime movers are the same. Totally different feel. Good morning, you're stabilizing the upper back. It's 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 uh, it's loaded a little lower on your upper back than like a squat. You have to maintain, you have to really maintain uh, strong upper back posture. As you do this, you could load it more. Yeah. Romanian deadlift, you have to hold on to the weight with Romanian deadlift. You have a little bit more activation of the mid back because you're holding on with your hands different bar path they both feel uh totally different both valuable for you know different uh, yeah. aspects and mm -hmm. that's the thing is like you 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 want to bank those types of exercises that are similar but provide you know a different stimulus so that way uh you know you're not constantly always doing the same thing and that way you can kind of stay ahead of that plateau and like we always talk about whichever one that you gravitate most to you know in, introduce the other one mm -hmm. you know so if you're somebody who loves good mornings but you're like oh i do good mornings there's no sense for me to do remaining deadlifts actually you should right and you know Vice versa, if you are somebody who always does Romanian deadlifts and you don't hardly ever do good mornings, and introduce good mornings. Right. Both have their, their own value. Now, that being said, um, I don't think for most people it's a good idea to do both in the same workout. Um, no, that's... It's, a, that's no. It might they're, be, they're close enough for that, Yeah, right? it might be overkill, right? right. Um, and especially because of your, you need to be really... With either Romanian deadlift or good morning, you have to have really, really yeah. good... They need real concentrated uh, uh, attention. Yeah, you have to have good, incredibly good low back uh, stability. If you start to break form, especially if you're loaded heavy, these exercises can be pretty nasty on the low back. Now, if your I, form is good, you're safe. I also think, too, like we you loading, like, good mornings, I can do way more than oh, a yeah. Romanian deadlift. Oh, yeah. A Romanian deadlift where you're keeping tension on it the entire time and you're having to hold on to that, even with wrist straps, you know, you're holding on to 200 or so pounds, but, you know, I could I could put good mornings on there. I can go 300 pounds and mm -hmm. do a good morning. So this, they're definitely different with loading, too. Next question is from Nick Zanace. What's a good way to program farmer's carries into your workout? What are the perks of going heavier versus walking farther? Oh yeah, this we're we're getting questions mm. like this because everybody's uh, a lot of people are enrolling Starting to do some strong. Yeah, training. everybody everybody's enrolling in Map Strong because uh, that's the program that's on sale. And so in that program, we programmed farmer walks uh, because uh, well, Robert Oberst uh, really liked them, said they're really important. Um, and now that I've done them regularly, uh, I 100% agree. Regardless of what your fitness goals are. Heavy farmer walks have tremendous uh, benefits for the, the entire body. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best exercises. I, I literally will put it in the top 10 now of exercises that I've done that have really worked the whole body, built strength, built muscle, and have improved my squats and my deadlifts and all that other stuff. But how do you program it? A lot of people have this question because it kind of works everything. Yeah. Where do I put it? Now, if you follow a MAPS program, we program it in for you. You don't have to worry about it. Or if you follow a full body workout, it really doesn't matter because you're working your whole body anyway. In, in which case, I would suggest doing farmer workouts after legs um, and maybe at the beginning of your back workout. But what if you do a body part split? Where would you put a farmer walk? Um, two places I can think of that it would make sense, either back day or leg day. I think those are the two days that I think farmer walks uh, would, would be programmed um, on a split. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I like that. I also like it as a, a way to start my workout, too. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this the other day. This was one of the exercises primer. that we, yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that I was, uh, I originally, I didn't think it was a good idea because I thought, oh, it's going to exhaust me before I go do legs or I go do chest or I go do some other exercise. But because it's one of the single exercises that I can think of that literally wakes up your, in, your entire body, mm -hmm. every, from your neck all the way down to your toes, I love to, to start it with a workout. I'll do, you know, two or three nice heavy carries 
And then when I go into any other exercise after that, I feel like I'm so primed. And it reinforces good posture. Right. So, so yeah, it stacks your spine. It gets all the joints uh, awake and, and alive. And so I do like it as, as a primer. And like you said before that, I thought it might exhaust me. But I've actually used this a few times uh, before going into my compound lifts and loved it. Uh, but I also like using farmer walks, uh, you know, for building volume. So we, we do this whole like these work sessions within, uh, you know, map strong. And, and that's really to to build up this 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 tank, this motor, this ability to carry heavy things for longer uh, amounts of time. And I just find that so valuable uh, when you're going back into heavy lifting in your workouts. It's like you have that that endurance for all those lifts. So now I can get through those lifts more effectively because I just have this bigger tank oh know? dude uh one of the biggest benefits i got from map strong uh was my my recovery ability went through the roof because it builds your ability to handle more and more volume and workload so then i would go back to a, a, a another maps program and like my body was recovering so fast and it realized it was because strong helped uh, you know build that up now the last part he, he's asking about the perks of going heavier versus further mm. Is there a, a recommendation that you guys have with it? Like, do you prefer to go heavier or go uh, further? So, yeah, it depends kind of like what I'm doing. But, like, I, if, if it's for building volume, I like to go a bit lighter and then for a further distance. Mm -hmm. right? And so that's something that I actually prefer to do it that way. I know, like, uh, in the strongman training, they, they do a lot of, like, sprints with it, with, like, heavier loads, and they kind of run with it. Uh, which has value in itself for that kind of more explosive, you know, type of strength. But uh, for me personally, I do the longer distance. Yeah, I, so I've used it as a strength building exercise where I go heavy and I'll go 50 yards, which is relatively short uh, distance to carry a weight. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten up to 450 something pounds uh, for that distance. No wrist straps, just my hands. And it's feels like it's it feels like a strength exercise like a deadlift yeah like so, it builds my body like a deadlift would so, so we're all kind of a little bit different so i i like in here because we have it's our place and i can take my shoes off i love to get barefoot in them and actually walk like really controlled so mm -hmm. I, yeah i'm doing it moderately heavy i'm not going like the heaviest i can i would do that it with sneakers and kind of moving relatively fast to the 50 yards and back like what sal's talking about but I, well, because I'm using it more like a primer to wake everything up, I like to get my shoes off, get barefoot, pull my, and like really think about my posture and like every step I take. So I'll go for a shorter distance, but I'll move slower and really think about my entire body, the way I'm holding my shoulders, where my neck is positioned, each foot. And as my, my foot's kind of striking the ground and kind of gripping the floor with my feet. To me, I that I love that. I think for most mm -hmm. people that what you just said, Adam, is probably the most valuable way to do a farmer walk. I think if you're advanced, high level, you want to build maximal strength, you've already got good support, you've got good stability, you've been working out for a while, then you can have fun with seeing you know how heavy you can go mm -hmm. uh, for distance, in, in which case then it becomes, like I said, a, a, a strength and building exercise. But most people would benefit from farmer carries from doing it with the intent of being perfect, perfect with their form and their technique. Next question is from Fit Within. Do you see any value in experimenting with different popular diets purely to gain knowledge and personal experience? How would you go about doing this? Oh, just extremely valuable. Yeah, totally. Yeah. This is the best way to do it. If you want to learn, here's the thing that I that is really crazy. We most people have no idea. Uh, they're just so unaware of how food really affects them, partially because they eat the same stuff all the time. So it's hard to know until you cut things out and replace them. And then you become all of a sudden more aware, like, whoa, I, you know, removing that and, and replacing with this, I feel so different. Or in my workouts, I have so much more stamina or I have so much less stamina or my sleep is better or wow, my my gas or my acid reflux now is fixed or whatever. You, you have no idea until you have a bit of a contrast. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And doing this uh, helps you do that. So, for example, going keto, which is very, very low or no carbohydrates and high fat, it showed me that I just don't need as many carbohydrates as I think. Uh, I, I had great, I was okay, I felt good. Um, and what I notice on keto that's distinct is I'm sharper uh, mentally. I also notice that I do have less stamina. Carbohydrates do provide me with more stamina. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm working out. And so these are things you can notice with yourself by going through these diets. Now, the other part I want to say is you got to do it for a little while though. You don't just go keto or vegan or paleo or whatever for a few days. 
you got to give yourself a couple months of doing something before you really solidify what you're understanding about your body. So I I used to do this without telling them that they're doing it, right? So oh, with your clients, you mean? Yeah. So this was like a this I I love to to weave in and out of all the different you know quote unquote diets. Uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell a client that I wouldn't be like, oh, we're going vegan now, or, oh, we're going keto now, or we're going paleo now. I would just adjust their food and I would run a, a much higher protein or a much higher fat diet for a mm -hmm. while. And then we would reduce, you know, meats. And then all of a sudden it would be like mostly veg. And so I would do that. And then I'd be asking them to report back to me and be like, how are you feeling? What do you notice? Yeah. And then try and make them aware of that versus, I mean, God, this weekend I was with, uh, you know, my niece and her boyfriend were at Max's birthday and, you know, she's like, oh man, she goes, have you seen Game Changers yet? Oh, <laughs> like, no. oh no. Right, right. <laughs> so she tells me that they're going to go vegan right now. And I, and I, I go, you know, why don't you guys call me before you just all of a sudden go grocery shopping and decide because you watch a, one documentary that you're going to change? I was like, first of all, I said, I know you're eating because I've coached her before. I know your eating habits. I know what you love to eat. Like you absolutely love meats in your in your diet. So why would you completely eliminate it? Now, I'm totally for you eliminating some of the things that you probably don't need in there as regular as you probably were eating before, like the bacons every morning and butters. And, you know, if you're eating red meat all the time, why don't you go to like, you know, reduce down to chicken and fish and mm -hmm. see how you feel and then go run a vegan-ish type of diet, but allow chicken, because she's she's not doing it for animal rights. Like I said, if you're doing it for those reasons, she's like, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, if you don't give a shit about that, you enjoy meat, why would you all of a sudden go from somebody who eats it all the time to completely eliminating? Why don't you eliminate the ones that you think are potential offenders in your diet and eat like maybe leaner cuts or less frequently eat it and pay attention to how you feel and run maybe a higher vet, you're not getting enough vegetables and greens, maybe go that direction and look at it more like that versus going like eating one way and saying, oh, I watched this documentary. Now I'm going to eat a complete other way mm -hmm. and not really paying attention to what is your body telling you when you eat these foods and when you don't eat these foods. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's 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 a really, really good way to become aware of how foods affect your body, of how your current diet was affecting you. Because, again, mm -hmm. most people are just they have no idea. And so when they make some changes, all of a sudden things become more uh, more apparent to them. I love this. I absolutely love this. And here's another reason why I love it. Because for whatever reason, I, I know why, okay, our, our diets are much more to us than just food. I, I know that's, you know, if you break it down, it's just food. But really, it's much more than that, right? Food, this is why when you talk about diets with people, it gets almost like you're talking about politics or religion. Oh, yeah. In the fitness space, if you want to get into, like... You know, right now we're in election season, and you say anything that's anything that's politically, you know, motivated, any type of political comment, you're gonna get fire for one side, and it gets all crazy. And so people are like, I don't even want to talk politics. Sometimes you get this religion in the fitness space. Uh, you do this with nutrition. You talk to fitness people, mm -hmm. you start talking diet. I swear to God, you will get into fights and arguments with them as if you were t if you were talking to. Yeah. You There's know, no about one size fits all. Yes, and this is the the message that people forget all the time because in their world this works so well yeah. and and it just gets promoted uh you know and, and this is what you hear from your relatives this is what you hear on the news you hear on like a, a documentary that's trying to you know really pull people in their direction and this is this is all monetarily driven uh, they they have a reason why they're doing that. They're they're marketing it to you like that because they want you to buy certain products. They want you to buy their method, their book, their plan, whatever it is. It is totally a good idea for you to go through these yourself and educate yourself. Uh, and, and this is this is my experience with fasting. Uh, you know, which is another sort of a method on its own, uh, which just helped me to understand my own habits and, and look more from an outside perspective of uh, why I'm so needy at certain times of the day for nutrients or, or, you know, what my patterns tend to be with. I go here because I just get this thing and it's uh, and, and it makes me feel this this thing like I feel great, like having coffee and having this muffin or whatever it was. Uh, and, and I can eliminate that and I can feel even better by doing this instead. And so I just think that, uh, you know, putting the ball back in your own court and, and really understanding it yourself is everything. That's what I mean. You're, you literally break. That's because nutrition or food is such a big part of us that you learn to break the chains 
to this, you know, to your food. And I don't mean break the chains like you're never going to eat again. I mean, again, as it, people treat it like it's a religion or like it's politics. And going from one diet to another, with with by the way, this has to be with healthy intent. Now, if you're going from diet to diet, which one's going to make me lose the most weight and you become obsessed about it? This can also become, uh, you know, a, a, an eating disorder. But if you do it with the intent of really listening to your body, see how you feel, you'll break those chains. You won't, you won't get stuck in that, that nutritional, you know, zealotry that a lot of us get stuck in. And you'll feel flexible. You'll feel like, okay, well, you know, I got this, this presentation to make, and I notice when I eat keto, I'm a little sharper mentally. Or, you know, I'm going to go kayaking with my friends. Right. Uh, I notice when I eat a little higher carbohydrate. You know what's best feel, for whatever situation. Yeah, or I'm feeling down, or my digestion is off. I know how to adjust my nutrition accordingly. Because, again, we're so tied. It's so funny. Like, when I talk to my parents about nutrition, just to give an example of how tied people are to their food. If I even make the recommendation, if I even hint that they should probably reduce or cut pasta out of their diet. Just for just see what happens. You know? I tell my whoa, just, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, whoa. just cut pasta out. Remember, my parents are, are Italian immigrants. When I say cut pasta out just to see how you feel. It's like cut off a leg. It's almost like I said, hey, listen, why don't you like cut, kill one of your children just to see what it feels like? That's, what it, that's the response I get, right? It's because we're so tied to our food. Moving from one to another in this way it helps you helps you break that. Well, not only that, I you know this is what I was telling my niece too is like the likelihood that you and your boyfriend are supposed to be eating the exact same thing is so unlikely. Yeah, yeah. you know, so consider that too because so many people do these diets and then they put the whole family on it or the their spouse or whatever has to do. Have it you with seen them. people put their pets on vegan diets? <laughs> yes, like oh, cats they, and dogs. They die. It's not, yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it work. it's like maybe this whatever diet you maybe you found one that works really well for you, but to think that because it works well for you that it's also going to work well for your partner is ridiculous. We're, we're, that's how individual all of us are and how unique it is. So. Instead of attaching yourself to, you know, the religion of the diet, you know, try to unpack what is it about this diet that is making you feel so good? And what was it about what you were doing before that was making you feel so bad? And maybe it's, a f it, and not maybe, for sure, it's a few things. That it's you, a piece of something. Yes. Yeah. It's, there's a few things that you probably eliminated when you followed this new diet X you know, that is making you feel so good and be where it's less about, oh, being so reg regimen about th this diet, these diet rules. And it's more about, oh, wow, when I cut out having, you know, butter and bacon, I do feel 10 times better. Okay. So you don't need to go full vegan. Just cut out the butter and the bacon mm -hmm. and eat normal. Or when you notice when you eat red meat two times a day, every single day, you feel terrible. So rotate your meat, maybe have some fish and some chicken and some turkey and some other things mm -hmm. in there instead. Of, so look at those things when you follow these these diets a made up thing it's yeah. completely made up yeah i know yeah. it was just food before right yeah and i'll end on this part with this uh within reason i know we're saying try a bunch of different diets oh, that right. doesn't mean try every yeah the yeah. cabbage yeah. diet <laughs> the pizza diet there's a lot of crazy shit out yeah, there yeah. so you could skip those yeah use a little common sense <laughs> next question is from taylor baca What's the hardest thing about being a dad? Oh, Adam, you're the newest dad. Ooh. You're the newest dad in the room. What's the hardest thing so far? You know, um, I guess I sound like an asshole if I say that it, there's nothing really hard. It, it, there's like little things, right? And I think the the, the hardest, if I were to label it, or the thing that comes to mind, um, is probably the, the, the difference of uh, that you have with your partner who's raising them. Hmm. Um, and all the little subtleties. Like I'll give you an example. Um Two that two that come to mind that I and I've shared one of them. I shared the crawling story, I believe, on the podcast. Did I share that on the yeah, podcast? You did. Mm -hmm. Right. So that Where was you're a little bit little like let him struggle more. Yes. She's a little yes. yeah, rescue right. him. Right. And uh there's another there's another thing recently that's came up that like um, you know, I, he's starting to walk around, right? He's he hasn't walk he's not walking, but he wants to walk all the time. So he you know, he's grabbing people's hands and then he that's all he wants you to do is yeah. walk him everywhere. And I'm actually really adamant about not wearing shoes. I want him barefoot. I want him barefoot like all the uh, all the time. Like I don't care if he's walking over dirt and rocks mm -hmm. and everything like that. Like I, I I think that's really good for him to start to adapt that way. And then we can put shoes on him later on mm -hmm. when it's like we're go like I'm not talking about when we're going public places in a grocery store. I'm talking about when we're in front of our house or her brother in law's house or somebody's Yeah, you're before. not walking through the tenderloin in San Francisco barefoot. Y yes, yeah. But you <laughs> oh know, in God. in our in our in our around our house and things like that, I, I like that. And she's like, No, he's gonna hurt himself or he can step on glass or he can cut his foot. And so this last uh the, for his birthday his sister has like a, 
you know, they have kind of an older house, and you guys remember uh, Wait, whose sister? Uh, Katrina's. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, her sister and brother. I think you've been out there. Have you guys been out to that house yet? No. In San Martin. So. No. Have, no. Okay. So, anyways, they have like an older house, and the 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 driveway is like definitely like older asphalt. You know, where there's like it's not flat and smooth. It's like rocks all over. Mm. Chunky. Yeah, chunky like that. And I had him barefoot, and he walks the best. And now my theory on this is that. You have so many nerve endings in your in your feet. This kid up until this point has only felt grass or carpet and all of a sudden he gets on this and I could see his like his toes and gripping the floor. All of a sudden he's walking way like he's his balance is way more stable. Now it's scarier cuz he's unstable, right? So mm-hmm. you know she she's like you got to get shoes on him. And I'm like, "No." Like this is great for him right now. It's waking up all those nerve endings that he's he's unaware of right now. And, and his de- brain is developing. Yes, and it. it's and it's speeding that process up. And so we get into this little bit of a tiff over it. And then I you know I find myself getting frustrated because I feel like this is kind of like my field. <laughs> it's like this is kind of what I'm like the my specialty. Let me have him. Let me have him here. And she's like, no, I don't want him to fall and get hurt. You know, and I want I don't want to cut his foot and then we have to rush him to the hospital type of deal. So right. I find and it, obviously it wasn't even a big deal for us and we, we moved on but it was enough for her to like to throw a jab at me and be like hey whatever you know type of deal so we've had a couple moments like that where there's just a difference of opinion on how something should be done that's about the only thing I mean of course like tired nights and we don't get to have our date nights like we used to and like the, the selfish side but honestly that's not hard for me because I waited till I was almost 40. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm over selfish, Adam. So I'm not having a hard time with that. I was ready for all of that, which I believe if I was 25, that would be really hard for me. The hardest thing I'd say is just that, is that, you know, Katrina was raised a certain way. I was raised a certain way. We both have certain things that we probably feel strongly. And I'm sure you guys have stories to relate oh, to this. I could echo, you know, again, it's very similar. To my household's very similar to that. But I think for me, it's, it's I don't want to always be Captain No Fun. Uh, and really, it's, it's it amounts to like there's there's ice cream trips, there's these things that like happen when I'm out of town, and all these things, and it's like I I I struggle with that because I I guess like I'm, I'm trying to create opportunities for fun that don't involve. Uh, you know, high sugar outlet things or like, you know, way too much like electronic stimulus. And, you know, these are these are the types of things because I pay attention to the behaviors that result, you know, from all of that that crazy input. And so uh, I try and balance to, to the point where, you you know, I don't want like the, the rebellion to happen as a result of dad always throwing the hammer down that, you know, this isn't going to be the case. But um, and Courtney supports me and she, she supports, you know, a lot of those, uh, those moments where I do have to kind of remove things that I, I can see patterns kind of, uh, as a result of, uh, you know, of, of these things, of these, these entertainment, uh, things that, that they, they get into, like, especially with the electronics and it's, it's a constant battle, but, uh, I, I guess the hard part is just to to keep steering and guiding and, and, and directing, uh, you know, like what my kids are getting exposed to, what their habits are, like what kind of friends they're around, like all these things. I'm like, I'm just constantly thinking about how this is going to affect their development and how, you know, good humans are going to be as a result, you know, around other people. And so it's not that it's hard. It's just that it's it's something that's always top of mind. And I'm also very very much like uh stressed out about everybody's safety well-being you know being you know trying to provide and whatnot so um that, that i mean that's all part of the job yeah. you know this is all this is what a dad is so i i, I own it you yeah. know i i told i i you know talked to my mom about that when my kids were really young about the like the worry and stuff and i'm like oh my gosh like i didn't realize how invulnerable I was before. I, yes. had, I had no vulnerabilities. I thought I did, but I really didn't. Now that I have kids, it's like, now you really worry. And my mom smiles and she's like, that never, now it'll never end. It, she goes, you think because you're grown up and you have your own family, they don't worry about you all the time? Right. She's like, that'll never go away. And I was like, holy shit, that's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge. I think you guys both make really good points because um, I think a big struggle, and I had my kids younger, so I kind of went through this. I think if you think you're going to have kids and be and life's going to be like it was before, you're, it's going to suck. Right. You have to expect and accept that things are going to be very different, and then you're going to be okay. Because if you're the guy that like 
you like to go hang out with your buddies and you and your wife or your girlfriend love to have all these date nights and all this freedom. And you think, yeah, when we have a kid, we'll get back to that old stuff before. It's, you're going to be at, at, at odds with reality because the reality is it's just not. And then you're going to hate life because you're not expect, accepting that it's always going to be different. So I, I remember going through that, um, you know, as a younger dad. I think right now um, there's a lot of things that are tough about being a parent. That's why I think uh, there's nothing that will make you grow. Uh, I don't want to say nothing, but there's very few things that will make you grow as much personally as being a parent because it's so damn. Anything that's really challenging does that uh, mm -hmm. to you. And I could list a, a bunch of stuff that's really hard. Uh, you know, it's really hard to like be human. You know, like not be perfect because then you second. You, you, if I lose my temper and I'm on my own or I'm with you guys, mm -hmm. I, oh, I lost my temper and I acted stupid. Not a big deal. You do that to your kids, you end up thinking about it for weeks. You know, like what? Have, you know, what have I? What did I say? Imprints on them. Yeah, yeah, like what did I say? What I did I do? Oh my gosh, I acted like such an asshole. What a terrible example I am. Or I hurt their. You know, what am I doing? That's really hard. The worry is really hard. You know, you have to learn how to get over that because I could literally sit here right now. You know, let's say your kids are at school and you could think about all the different things that could happen at school. That's really tough too. The worry is really tough. But right now, you know what I'm finding is, and, and this, I, I, you know, I'm sure this was tough for my parents too and their parents. It's really tough to do the right thing when the right thing is different than what everybody else in society mm is saying uh, is the right thing. Mm. You know, it, to do the opposite of what everybody else says right. is okay and good. It's really, really hard because you're battling. You're at, you're, you're, you're at war with all the other influences that they have. And this gets hard as they get older. When they're real young, it's just you. So they don't know any better. But as soon as they go to school, they have friends, they have their own experiences, and then they start to realize that, oh, my dad uh, oh, we're different. is different. Like... Right now, one of the big struggles is, is electronic use. This wasn't a problem when I was a kid because it just didn't exist. I mean, we had TV, but it wasn't that big of a deal. We didn't have 24-hour cartoons or 24-hour you know, entertainment. And we definitely didn't have the internet and iPhones and all that technology. And so I'm, you know, I'm over here looking at it, and I'm, I'm re and I see stark difference in my children when they're using a lot of electronics. Versus when they're not changes their personality completely. It changes their mood, uh, how they engage with other people. It's like the processed food of our generation. You know, our generation grew up and processed food became a big thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you lived at a home where your parents were like, "No, you can't buy the sugary cereal. We're not going to get the sugary cereal. We're not going to have snacks all the time. You can't have hot pockets for lunch." You're the weird kid because everybody else says it's okay. Yeah, and so you have to be different. Well, now I'm the guy that's like, if you want to use electronics, you need to ask me so I can monitor it. Well, I got a 15 year old kid, you know, he's got to right. ask his dad every time he uses electronics, right. um, you know, and he's telling me, you know, my friends can be on all the time. Why am I being a different? This is a challenge uh, as a parent, you know, or or you know, you have entertainment and media telling your kids that they glorify uh, sex, for example. Nothing, nothing wrong with sex. But uh, media makes you believe that it's everything. Uh, mm -hmm. that makes you believe that real connection without it isn't as is valuable. So then you're gonna have to counter that too, or counter processed foods. I'm a you know health and fitness person. Well, you know these shitty foods are all over the place. So now at my house with me, I'm the guy that's different. You know, or we value things that are different than what seems to be advertised out there. That's really fucking challenging because mm -hmm. you don't want to feel like the the jerk. And then you don't. What you also here's the other side of it. I don't want this to happen. I don't want my kids to go off on their own. Oh, now I'm not under dad's control. Finally, I get to go in the opposite direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? And rebel. So and maybe that balance. Maybe they'll maybe they'll end up doing that. I don't know. That's the hard thing. It's when, when raising your kids the right way is different than what everybody else seems to be doing. Well, and also you. you know realizing that uh, like they're not you. Yeah. You know, like, like, like really, really understanding that this is a different human being that has different ideas, oh, yeah. different, like, because you, you totally like, uh, portray your own ideas and like, well, I wouldn't have done that, you know, that, <laughs> that way. And this, and, and so that's something that I've, I've had to struggle with and realize and pull myself out and be like, these are completely different humans. I mean, even though they came, you know, from part of me, 
they, they're completely different. Dude, if you – here's a big one, right? If you don't raise your kids, somebody else will. And, and that right. just may be – society yeah, it might TV, be the, group of friends it might be the internet <laughs> yeah. it might be media it might be their friends you know you look at some of these sites that like you know i have a teenage boy and teenage boys there's certain sites that they like to go on you and i'll go on and i'll read these forums and you can see there's a lot of cynicism this is what tends to tends to happen with teenage boys they get cynical they make jokes about a lot of stuff everything's stupid or whatever and if i'm not opposing that that'll raise my kid Yep. So that's a big ass challenge. And as, as a dad, you have to be very involved because I'll use a fitness analogy. We talk about movement patterns all the time. If you do correctional exercise one hour a week, but then the the rest of the week yeah. you're moving terrible, which one's gonna win? Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, if your kid is being raised by you a little bit and everybody else and everything else is raising them all the time, you're you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose the battle. So I for me that's the, the hardest thing. Uh, about being a father. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So if you want to watch Mind Pump as well as listen, go to YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. Also, we have a lot of free guides. Uh, we present uh, guides that show you how to burn body fat, build muscle, strengthen your body. I thought you said uh, free guys. Guides. No okay. guys. Right. The guys are not free. Too bad. Uh, go to mindpumpfree.com. And then finally, if you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. I mean, when you think of like real world functional type strength, these the movements that they were doing, a lot of them, they didn't even have dumb. They were like rocks, yeah. boulders, or stones. And so to me, like what I love about how functional these are, and when I think functional, I think the most carryover into real life. That's it. Like, you know, as much as we, we tout... Uh, 